What even are Gaussian processes? Let's find out. Okay, Wikipedia says it's a stochastic process such that every finite a collection, sorry, a collection of random variables indexed by time or space, such that every finite collection of those random variables has a multivariate normal distribution. <laughs> what the heck does that mean? I, every finite linear combination of them is normally distributed. I have a hazy idea of what that means, but in reality, like, I don't, I don't understand why we need that, why that's helpful, or any of these things. Distribution of a Gaussian process is the joint distribution of those infinitely many random variables. A machine learning algorithm, which is more like what we, what we care about, uses lazy learning. What the heck is lazy learning? Oh, you learn when you get a query instead of learning before the queries? Okay, interesting. So the prediction is not just an estimate, but also has uncertainty information. So if we look back at this, the prediction is like, this is the prediction, but this is the level of uncertainty in the prediction. And it's, and it's regression, yeah, okay. It's a probabilistic method that gives a confidence for the predicted function. Okay, okay, so if we, and then if we add in more points, the confidence gets, gets more. Not the confidence gets more, sorry. Confidence gets, gets smaller, smaller range, so therefore, theoretically, better function, right? Make predictions by incorporating prior knowledge. Yep, most obvious application is fitting a function. Yeah, okay, great. For a given set of training points, there are infinitely many functions that fit the data. Yeah, that makes sense. That's that's exactly this, like what we're talking about before. All right, so the line could be like this, or it could be like this, you know, and slightly off, right? Gaussian process offer an elegant solution, assigns a probability to each possible function. Okay. The mean of the probability distribution is the most probable. Okay, that makes sense. Sure. Okay, you're gonna explore the mathematical foundation. Oh, some some data set. Um, AKA data X labels Y. Now, is it a confidence prediction or is it a confidence interval, right? So, so let's just, let's, let's skip all this stuff for now, which looks kind of intimidating, right? Uncertainty information could easily be the confidence, like, for instance, at this, at this point, we are 50% confident that it's here. Actually, no, it would make more sense if it's an interval. We're skipping dealing with how we find the confidence slash uncertainty for now. Okay, we gotta just figure out the rest of it. So that'll that'll be a question. How do we find the confidence interval prediction interval? That'll just that'll just be on our list of questions. When do we fit the function to the data set? And how? How do we fit the function to the data set. Um, what is the function that we are fitting? Let's skip a bit about foundations and go to try to answer our question, which is, what is the function we're fitting? Presumably, it's just a multivariate Gaussian, which, you know, we only have a hazy idea of what that means. Yeah, combine them together to make Gaussian processes. Okay, so you're... You're flipping the script on us, um, but sure, 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 sure. We'll we'll do we'll do this. Sure, sure, sure. We'll 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 listen to you. Okay, multivariate normal distribution. That's the function we are trying to fit. Boom. Model X and Y. So training data set Y. Test data set X for the value at each point in X and the confidence at each point. Find the conditional probability, probability of any test point given the training points. 
Gaussian distributions are closed under conditioning. Oh, okay, so the probability we're trying to find is also a normal distribution. Okay, so this is so this is where I, I had a fundamental misunderstanding of what was happening. There is no training, as I'm calling it, right? It's just it's just inference. Okay, well, I'm 90% sure at this point, we don't need, okay, sorry. We don't need training, right? Because it training and inference happen at the same time, depending on what we have, right? Right, because we're trying to find the probability of the test data set given the training data set. Okay, so first off, just for you guys, Gaussian distribution. Yeah, yep, yeah, exactly, exactly. The Gaussian distribution has a mean and standard deviation, and it always looks like the bell curve. Yeah, exactly. So this is the fancy math for it. Um, so this is two times the standard deviation. Yep, that makes sense. Mean tells you where the center of the Gaussian distribution is, and then you have the standard deviation. The, the, the standard deviation, which tells you the width of the distribution. Now, what are they saying here? We're interested in the multivariate case where each random variable is distributed normally and their joint distribution is also Gaussian. It's defined by a mean vector and a covariance matrix. The okay, covariance matrix models the variance along each dimension determines how the different random field random variables are correlated covariance matrix describes the shape of the distribution sure okay why do we care about marginalization and conditioning like why is this a thing that we care about right and what is this okay bivariate normal distribution which just means um 2D normal distribution. On the right, you see the distribution conditioned on a given X, which is similar to a cut through the original distribution. So now, now we're down here. You can see it's most probable in this region. And then when we bring it closer here, it's closer to the center. And then now we're moving it over to the top because we're taking a slice of, of the area at each of these points. So this is Okay, conditioned on X, the Gaussian distribution looks like this. Okay, this is starting to make sense now. So, and what I mean by that, it's starting to make sense of how we're getting the confidence interval because if we're conditioning on uh, a certain data point and we get a Gaussian distribution at that data point, we can just calculate the confidence interval normally. Why do I need to know this right so conditioning is exactly what we were trying to talk about or talk about right we want to find uh the probability of x given y given the training data set right we want to find the probability of x given the training data set and so then we have this you know we get this gaussian distribution for that um why do we care what is marginalization why do we care Okay, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, so we answered this question. We get a Gaussian distribution as output. We naturally know, um, right? So this is actually a Gaussian distribution for any, for a given point. Why? which then becomes the prediction of the value at each point in X and the confidence for each point in X because, um, sorry, not for a, for, for a given point in, in X, because that's the test data set because they switched X and Y for some reason on us. And then we can get the prediction because this is the mean of the distribution as it's the most likely point and the confidence at each point, which we can calculate and calculate from the distribution. And then we don't need this anymore. Why do we care about marginalization? Let's just, let's just see if we can figure that out real quick. 
From marginalization, we can extract partial information from multivariate probability distributions. In particular, given a normal probability distribution, P and X, Y. So to marginalize out a random variable, we simply drop up that. Okay, okay. Do we care about marginalization at all? So through the marginalization, we can extract the respective mean function and the standard deviation for the ith test point. I thought that was the conditioning bit. What? Marginalization. We can extract partial information from multivariable probability distributions. All right, so the way to interpret this is that if we're interested in the probability density of at x at the point of x, we need to figure out all possible outcomes that could lead to any result. Okay, well, why do we care about marginalization? Theoretically, there's an answer later, but I we couldn't understand it, just briefly looking at it. Okay, so the joint probability distribution spans the space of possible function values for the function that we want to predict. Okay, so this is the space of the possible values of the function, whereas this is the actual Gaussian at a point, right? Right, that makes sense, maybe? Okay, covariance matrix is determined by a covariance function, which is called the kernel, okay. In Gaussian processes, we treat each test point as a random variable. A multivariate, a multivariate Gaussian distribution has the same number of dimensions as the number of random variables. Since we want to predict the function values at the size of x equals n test points, so for at n, <coughs> at n different test points, then the corresponding Gaussian distribution is also n-dimensional. Making a prediction then boils down to drawing samples from this distribution. We interpret the ith component of the resulting vector as the function value corresponding to the ith test point. Oh, okay. I was wondering how in the world we go from, you know, a 10 dimensional thing to a single value, right? Like I was wondering how that, when do we want to fit the function to the data set? How do we fit the function to the data set? Why do we care about marginalization? We fit a multivariate Gaussian distribution to our data. I mean, we need to incorporate the 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 training data somewhere somehow. Okay, so I assume that's figuring out what the covariance matrix is and what the mean is, which is what this talks about. Okay, in Gaussian processes, it often assumes that the mean is zero, which simplifies the necessary equations. Even if the mean isn't zero we can add the mean back to the resulting function values after prediction. You center the data on zero, and then later, if necessary, you can just add it back. Okay, that's fine. So how do we, yeah, exactly. How do we set up the covariance matrix, right? Because the covariance matrix is the thing that tells us everything we need to know about our distribution and, the, the, and what are the functions the characteristics of the function. Yep. Okay, so we get given two points, it returns a similarity measure between those two points as a scalar. So every entry in the covariance matrix describes the influence the ith and jth point have on each other. Influence is kind of a hazy word. Like, what do we mean by influence? Like, it kind of makes sense. Just like intuitively, it's, you know, given the ith and jth data points, how related they are, right? Like, yeah, so there should be, yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's a correlation between the two, um, which will help us figure out exactly uh, what our function is. Um, because the idea is there's correlations between all the points in our data that we can figure out patterns from to learn a function. We're doing a regression problem. We got lost in the 
in the nonsense, but but we're doing a regression problem. We still haven't we've we've kind of answered the question of how in the world do we actually do this, but we still haven't figured like it's still not clear necessarily how we're learning from the training data or setting up the function that we're using from the training data and from the test data. Okay, so what happens? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What happens if we take into account the training data? Yes. First, we form the joint distribution so we can catenate the training and test points to co compute the corresponding covariance matrix. Using conditioning, we can find, yeah, so we can find the probability of x of any of probability of any test point given the training points from this, okay. The dimensions of this new distribution matches the number of test points. Okay, so we're finding probability of all test points given the training points. The intuition behind this step is that the training points constrain the set of functions to those that pass through the training points. Okay, so yeah, so that's set of possible functions. If we go back to this earlier, so these are our training points. We, obtain a, we can obtain a prediction for our function values by sampling from this distribution, but this involves random choosing. Okay, so we don't want to randomly choose a point from this distribution. So that's where marginalization comes in. Oh, using marginalization, that's how we get the mean and standard deviation. Ah, and then the mean and standard deviation is how we calculate the actual value that we care about and the confidence. Okay, so if, if, if we're doing that through marginalization, how exactly does marginalization work, right? So, so now is when I want to know how marginalization works. Marginalization, we can abstract partial information from multivariate, from, from probability distributions, given this pro the probability distribution over x and y, to marginalize out a random variable from Gaussian distribution. So this is this is literally finding oh 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 I see I see I see I see. At this point, is that if we're interested in the probability of yes, exactly. If we're interested in the probability density, probability of any specific test point, we need to look at all possible outcomes of the training data that could lead to the result. I want to, to write that in my own words. It's a way to determine p of x from, from any specific test point given both the training and the test points. So how does it work? We take into account the integration, all possible values of y at the value of x. So we take into account all possible values of the training data set at the v value of the test, the test point that we're trying to determine. How do we use it? How do we use it? Interesting. All right, well, this says we're using it to find the probability density, but down here we're saying we're using it to find the mean and standard deviation, right? Did I did I simplify? Did I oversimplify it? Is it is it not just? Oh oh oh! So this is this is probability dish. Wait no, wait I'm confused. This should be. Okay, so this should yield a Gaussian distribution. We simply drop the variables from the mean and covariance matrix. I mean, math, this math makes sense, but we're, it feels like we skipped a step. Okay, 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 I've missed, I've missed something. Covariance matrix ensures that values that are close together in an input space will produce output values that are close together. That makes a lot of sense. Right, so we've set up this joint distribution and then we can condition on this to get the probability of the test data set given y. Sure. 
what exactly what exactly we're doing right so let's let's skip marginalization again um because question mark question mark do some math and you get the mean and standard deviation okay so conditioning we take a cut through this and we get a new why do we need why do we need marginalization at all? Right? Because, like, here here we can see the condition. <laughs> if we condition it, the probability of the testing data points, depending on the training data points, we have a formula for it, right? We can get our, our mean and standard deviation. Why do we need marginalization, right? It's because, like, as we can see here, we can take a cut through this figure out that the mean value that uh, when our value is x the mean is point you know negative point seven seven or whatever and you know marginalization is telling us the same thing but like why do we need why do we need can that at all okay marginalization gets the probability of various values of the variables in the subset without reference to values of other variables Whereas the conditional distribution gets the probability contingent upon the values of the other variables. Why do we care about marginal distribution then in Gaussian processes? Like, oh, oh, I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> okay, so so what's happening is we use conditioning to find probability distribution of any of of all of the test points given the training data points that's great but when we want to find the value at any specific test data point we have to marginalize the test data points so that our function depends on only the possible values of that test data point and none of the other ones oh it's a way to make probability distribution of multiple variables depend only on one variable. How does it work? We take into account all possible values of all other variables at the value of x. How do we use it? We do the math, get the mean and standard deviation of the Gaussian normal distribution, whatever you want to call it, um, at the ith test data point. A way to determine the probability of one variable given another variable. How does it work? How does it work? It's just math. Oh, that's bad. That's a bad, that's, that's bad, bad nightmare. Uh, <laughs> Oh gosh, I know what conditioning is. I know I've, I've, I've known what it was before this. I didn't know what marginalization was, uh, but I knew what conditioning was. I think it's just a definition, right? Like it's just the thing we do, right? Like even marginalization depends on conditioning. Like this is a condition, the probability of X given Y. It's just a thing, right? Oh gosh. Okay, now I'm questioning my whole existence. <laughs> Whatever, how do we use it? So we condition the probability of the test data set on training data set in a multivariate Gaussian distribution for the whole test data set. So I'm gonna rewrite this in terms of how does this actually work? Input training data set y and test data set. X. This goes against my instinct of my, all of my years to define it this way. Ah, uh, so we're gonna just we're just gonna go. We're just we're gonna just we're just gonna we're just gonna we're just gonna skip the math and go to variables and just go train and test. <laughs> <laughs> the output. I should first mention this is for regression the value and the confidence 
at that point. At each point in test. Uh, okay, so, so first off, center the data to have mean zero. Concatenate the training and test data points. Uh, create a covariance matrix using a similarity function, kernel function. Uh, I guess I should just say using a kernel function to find the similarity between every point in into we'll just we'll just we'll just do this and the similarity between every point and combined okay sorry create a covariance matrix okay use the kernel function to find the similarity between every point combined the similarity between point i and point j is the value of the matrix at i comma j calculate the joint distribution using the covariance matrix. Then, now that we had the joint distribution, calculate the conditional distribution, aka calculate the probability test given train. This is the thing that forces it to actually fit to the data points. Marginalize the conditional distribution, aka determine the probability distribution of any single point in test. Okay, determine the probability distribution of any single point in test given all other points. Other alternate here, um, we have a conditional distribution already. Sample the value at each point in test from the conditional distribution or sample the value several times to approximate the mean and standard deviation instead of calculating it through marginalization. Now we have the mean and standard deviation of every point in test because that's what we calculated in the last step when we calculated the, the marginalized distribution. So now the mean's great because the mean is the the mean is the predicted value. So now we need to calculate the confidence. Calculate the confidence interval using the standard deviation, uh, which is actually pretty straightforward, uh, and you could you could look that up pretty easily. We have our output. So now done. So now we're done. So the mean is the prediction. The mean or the sampled value from um, this one, this part is the prediction of the of, of the Gaussian process, and we just calculated and we have the and we have the confidence interval. Okay, so when do we fit the function to the data set? That is right here. Um, you know, because it's it's calculating it both at the same during inference. How do we fit the function to the data set? Same thing uh, when we're calculating the conditional distribution slash, you know, creating the covariance matrix. Why do we care about marginalization? That's because that's how we uh, figure out the value of the mean and standard deviation on the conditional distribution of each individual point in test. And we're fitting a multivariate normal distribution to our data. We're done. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how long this video is going to turn out being, but this took an embarrassing long time. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something. <laughs>